Um, you know, there are things that concern Indigenous people in Canada's north, and I think of examples in where I'm from in Manitoba, in the north, where we have remote communities where you can only fly in to the community. There isn't an all-weather road. And in the winter, goods are shipped up to the community on winter roads that are built on the ice or muskeg in a place where you couldn't normally have a road. You couldn't have an all-weather road. And with climate change, we know that there are communities, entire communities, that in a period of time will no longer be able to receive the things that they need, th that they need, like the goods that they need to continue to survive in the community. So there's uh, an important socio-cultural destruction that is attached to climate change. And that um, is having pretty significant impacts on health and safety of individuals. So with change, um, cl climatic change, we're seeing, um, you know, the safety of the roads that exist being jeopardized, people falling through the ice, or we're seeing a very shortened season in which goods can come into the community, which has implications, for example, on um, the health of, of people or the, the well-being of people because certain things are not translated into availability in the community. Um, it also means power dynamics exercised within communities. Um, you wouldn't think that climate change would mean that you'd have power dynamics based on economics necessarily in a small community of 300 people. But if your fuel hasn't come up on the winter road, or if you're running out of fuel at the end of the season, the cost of fuel is d astronomical and it creates tensions between people and can have impacts on families, can have um, criminal implications in terms of people fighting over a lack of resources. And that can be very devastating to communities. And it's resulting already, I think, in a, mac a mass exodus um, of people from the north. Um, in Winnipeg, our, our urban indigenous population is growing at, at an incredible rate. Approximately half of indigenous people in Manitoba are now living in an urban center. And uh, that has implications for resources in those urban centers and migration of indigenous people from traditional ways of life or land living into an urban environment can be pretty um, catastrophic and damaging for them in, um, in an emotional and physical and well-being context, especially if you've lived off the land. Um, that's your way of life. It's, it's in your, your mind, it's in your spirit, it's in your body and your, your physical health in terms of the food that you eat. And when that's taken away from you, um, maybe not tangibly removed like in the context of residential schools, but where that way of life can no longer be sustained, that has a huge impact on individuals and families and communities and Indigenous nations. And preservation of way of life uh, and language and culture within that um, is an important part of continuing survival. That's essentially how Indigenous people in, in Canada have survived, is keeping language and culture alive and those, that sense of family and connectedness to land. Without those things, um, we're going to have a hard time with survival. Not to say it's impossible. There's different ways of connecting to land and language and culture, and we can do that to a certain extent in an urban environment, but it's not easily compatible, and that's going to be a challenge of, um, of our generation and future generations, is how to reconcile that loss, um, how to live with that loss. It's pretty, it's profound. Um. I wish I had a more hopeful message. <laughs>